I'm revisiting the G major jig from the G major French suite and I'm playing it rather slowly, reinforcing my fingering, uh, deciding on what groupings or articulations I'm using for the subject, um, how the counterpoint works between the hands. Uh, there are two basic voices, there's third voice sometimes added in. Um, there's the question of how do you feel this? I feel it in two. To get the robust feeling, I feel it in two as opposed to so many groups of triple uh, sixteenths. It's twelve sixteenths, so there's four, eight, four of those three groupings. But I think of half measures as one beat, so that I think of one, two, one. Into the other thing is um, I choose to play the subject uh, legato, but when I have the eighth to the sixteenth figure, I bounce my hand a bit. So if I do it slowly, you'll see. <laughs> of course what happened before where he has intrinsic to the subject a subdominant to a tonic broken chord and that's playing out in the first two pages where you probably heard it and I'll go a little slower <laughs> to the one starts out in the G major level um, where he goes there it is four chord to one chord and then quickly into D major he has that's four chord to one there so you'll hear that quite a bit through these first two pages so I dip that one chord a bit um, so to get the, the wonderful, uh, joyful bounce to this, the dance-like feature, uh, you do have to uh, play it with, with the energy that it needs, feeling the two, and also feeling this. You know, that lifts it up to that wonderful rhythm uh, is very beautiful to it and intrinsic to it. It's also sequences that are important in this first two pages. Uh, let's see if we can find some of them. I'm going to go a little slow and point out the sequences as well. One, two, sequences, uh, one of which was So one kind of retracts and then one continues forward. So you have to respond to that 
Um, and that's why you, you have to be very malleable in playing this, that it's not one static group of three sixteenths, but three plus three plus three plus three, but you're shaping everything according to harmonic rhythm, according to sequences, um, according to the feeling of rhythm of two, and also the subject in the counterpoint relationship between the hands. Now, you have to be aware of contouring in this as well. I think that's a big deal um, in this, is how you shape um, these relentless groups of three and these bouncy rhythms that we... That also how you get the vitality. And using your wrists there, you can see that I'm using my wrist. Kind of lifts them up. So in the second half of the jig, he is inverting the subject. He starts in what we think is D major, as a D major outline triad but he keeps the um, C natural, which is part of G major. So you don't really feel D major for very long because of that C natural that you're gonna hear. Um, but then after that, he's gonna go into different keys. You're gonna hear E minor, you're gonna hear A minor, then you're gonna go back to D major, you're gonna go back to G major. So there's a couple of keys being explored. Uh, now, in the uh, first half, we had the subject in this direction. Now we have this upside down, and we're starting in a D major triad. I'm going to go slower. sense that you think you're in one key and suddenly you're in another key and I was as I was playing like whoops I'm in D major now and now I'm in E minor now I'm in A minor and even though you have all these marching through keys you also have to keep track of the counterpoint between the hands you have to know where your sequences are getting higher and you're intensifying where you're falling back and of course that's what he does a whole lot of and here's a, a classic example of how many sequences down he has here, and I'll go slowly. So you can see that that's a bunch coming down, and you've got to really block a lot of these things out to do a lot of chord blocking, because there's so many broken chords that chord blocking is good, but it's only as good as the fingering that you choose is, is set in stone. You really have, fingering is really critical. Um, and, and there are a couple of other places where he has um, broken chords uh, in inversions. Now, where was that as I was playing and I was doing some um, rotations? Like here, this is the dominant of E minor. <laughs> And I'm thinking in groups of, of chords that are un, unraveled. So that's important. So you can see that this is a very tricky piece all around. But you can see that playing slowly is, is the key. And knowing 
to the counterpoint, knowing how the feeling of two, knowing the sequences, knowing um, the different keys.